Okay, now I want to answer some of the questions I hear most often. First up, what's the deal with calories? Just how important are total calories? Well, quite frankly, total calories have nothing to do with just about anything. For one thing, if you've read any of my books, and if you are looking forward to the energy paradox, we now know that the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to a human being or, for that matter, any other animal. The, that second law is calories in, calories out, and that you should eat less calories and exercise more, and that's the secret to weight loss. What none of us understood when those rules came out is that a calorie is not a calorie because they act differently depending on whether or not bacteria in your gut are eating some of those calories and whether they're keeping those calories for themselves to make lots of baby bacteria or conversely, whether they're converting those calories into more assimilable calories that will make you fat. And I've gone on and on ad nauseum about this. Depending on the type of bacteria within you, you will seek out high sugar and high fat foods that will make you fatter. Depending on the bacteria, you will seek out low sugar and low weight gaining foods that will make you thinner, depending on your bacteria. The other thing is that foods have different amounts of energy that are required to break them down. For instance, we lose about a third of the calories in protein in the process of breaking protein down into amino acids. We lose a few carbohydrate uh, calories in breaking that down. Sadly, we lose very few calories in breaking down fat. And there's been some fantastic work, uh, particularly out of uh, Dr. Spector's lab, looking at giving the exact same amount of calories to individual patients. One group got pretty much the standard American diet where 70% of the foods were ultra processed. The other group got whole foods, but the calorie amounts were identical between the two groups. The group that got the ultra processed food, same amount of calories, actually gained weight and had horrible metabolic profile. The group that got the same amount of calories that were in the whole foods didn't gain weight and had no metabolic consequences. So a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in The Energy Paradox, and I'll give you a teaser, they looked at some Italian athletes where they controlled the timing of their eating, and the Italian athletes had to eat the exact same food, the exact same calories. If the Italian athletes ate in their meals over a 12-hour period, versus a six hour period, same amount of calories. The athletes who ate during the six hour period lost weight. The athletes who ate the same calories during a 12 hour period did not lose any weight. So a calorie is not a calorie. So ignore the calorie on a label. And you'll notice in none of my books do I show a calorie count on any of our recipes. It's that not important. Okay, now what about the daily recommended intake? Isn't that really important for the foods we eat? Absolutely not. No hunter-gatherer, no animal has ever read a label looking at the recommended daily food intake. That's ridiculous. It turns out uh, in a little while we're going to have some very interesting authors who have looked at why animals eat the foods they eat and Spoiler alert, it turns out almost all animals, from the littlest to the biggest, including humans, seek out about 15% of the food they eat as protein. And universally, about 15% of the calories that animals eat should be protein. That's what they're looking for. 
Interestingly enough, most of the blue zones, one of the things that I talk about, most of the blue zones eat only about 10% of their calories of, as protein. And it may be one of the secrets of the blue zones, as I've talked about before. What do you think of fortified foods? So fortified foods means that we took the original food, tore it apart into a fine powder, threw away all the nutrients, and we put it back, labeling it as fortified with eight essential vitamins or fortified with 12 essential vitamins and minerals. If you see the word fortified on a label, that means we destroyed the nutritional content of that food and we had to put some back in the process of destroying it. Run the other way. Uh, I've said this on a podcast before, but it's worth repeating. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and my best friend's father was head of what is now ConAgra. Uh, it was called Consolidated Mills back then. And they were a flour making company. And his mother made amazing chocolate chip cookies. And he, my uh, friend and I would come home after school and eat raw cookie dough. And the father came in uh, one day, saw us eating the raw cookie dough and said, don't eat that stuff, there's bug eggs in it. And we went, what? There aren't any bug eggs in here, there aren't any bugs. And he says, well, it's just eggs. The bugs can't grow in flour because there's nothing that they can live on. And as I've told you many times, if a bug can't live on that stuff, you have no business eating it. Uh, another fun fact, in my house, uh, we have a giant jar of Oreo cookies in a glass jar that sits on the counter. We inherited it when we bought our house over two years ago, those Oreo cookies have, number one, never been touched, but they've never been touched by a bug or a mold, and they are as pristine in that jar two years later as when we moved in. Similarly, we have another jar of pretzels that we inherited, and those pretzels are just as pristine as when we moved in. Uh, Michael Poland has a Twinkie that he keeps on his desk, and I believe it has now been there for 10 years. He gives it a squeeze every now and then, and it's just as luscious and juicy and fresh 10 years as it was 10 years ago. The point of all this is, if bacteria and mold and insects won't eat those foods, that should be telling you something, and you shouldn't eat it either. Okay, let's talk about specific ingredients on labels I get questions about all the time. Natural flavors. First of all, there is absolutely no labeling law that defines what a natural flavor is. Obviously, an artificial flavor is probably something you don't want to look for or pick up on a label. But a natural flavor is no guarantee that, in fact, it's natural. How about soy lecithin and soy phospholipids? I get this all the time. It turns out that lecithin is a phospholipid, and Phospholipids, as you're going to learn about in the energy paradox, are incredibly important for the functioning of the inner and outer membranes of mitochondria, those little energy producing organelles in most of our cells. And you have to have a supply of phospholipids in your diet to actually generate the membranes of mitochondria. So, just because something may be derived from soy doesn't necessarily make it, you know, the evil empire that you have to avoid. So soy obviously has lectins, but lecithin and phospholipids do not contain lectins. So there are components of certain, you know, 
evil beings that are actually good for you. And as I've told you many times, I pressure cook beans. I have beans several times a week uh, as part of my diet. But if you pressure cook them, they will give you the phospholipids that are actually missing in most of our diets. Now there's other great places to get phospholipids, particularly in shellfish and clams and mussels. Uh, and that's why I recommend wild shellfish. Pea protein. Pea protein lectins are proteins. And you gotta be very, very, very careful when you're dealing with proteins from lectin-containing foods. Like, for instance, soy protein in and of itself contains lectins. Pea proteins contain lectins. Now, if you pressure cook and extrude soy protein to make texturized vegetable protein, you'll destroy the lectins. But so far, I've not seen any papers that show that pea protein has the lectins have been destroyed. So be very cautious for looking at brown rice protein, pea protein, because the brown rice has the lectins. So, uh, so far, stay away from pea protein. There are fruits, the squash family, have lectins in their peels and their seeds. And that's why, in general, I ask you to avoid those. But the same rule applies. If you take the peel and the seeds out, pumpkin is not a lectin-containing food as long as those parts are removed. The reason I don't recommend it as a big part of your diet is remember any fruit is sugar, including a pumpkin. And so pumpkins and zucchini still have residual sugar. So they're not a huge healthy part of your diet. This comes up all the time. And it actually came up years ago when Quest Bars, which we recommend certain Quest Bars, changed their starch into uh, corn-based uh, resistant starches. And I actually spoke with the company, and it's the same thing. There are lectins in corn. There are a number of proteins in corn that 70% of my patients react to when we test them for it. But the starches in corn and potato don't contain those lectins. Those are sugar molecules. So if you said corn protein or potato protein, then we're talking a different subject. But in general, particularly if the corn starch is lower on the label, if the potato starch is lower on the label, you're going to be okay in most cases. All right, how about oils? I get a lot of questions about this, and that's why I did an entire podcast episode dedicated to the topic. So please check out the episode 129 on the Dr. Gundry podcast. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Of labeling on food, which yeah. is basically just doing math. They're not actually... It's actually not accurate. <laughs> They're not accurate at all. And it completely negates the complexity of human digestion. That's the most important part. But the woman who really pioneered and made 